Hey everybody, I'm glad you're watching this today. I want to talk to you today about the identity of God working through you to produce good and favor in your life, even amidst tumultuous experiences. And what are tumultuous experiences? It's when we're experiencing times that are trying, that are challenging, either socially challenging, either financially challenging, or mentally and emotionally challenging. Any ways in which we experience a hurdle or an obstacle or a mountain in our path ahead. How do we navigate those times? How do we come out stronger? And how do we walk in the favor and the blessing of God in spite of those trials? And how do we not just go through problems, but grow through problems? Well, there's a passage of scripture that I love that encourages me. It's in Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to God's purpose. Well, that makes me ask the question, okay, so then if things can work together for my good, Where's the realm of causation? In other words, what is causing things to happen? And some people have traditionally read that text and thought, well, then that means God is making bad things happen and God is making good things happen. And when all this stuff happens to me, as if it's an external cause on me, when all these things happen, if it happens, it's because God wants it to happen. Well, that's not always true. Um, we do know that, that the realm of causation is a co-creative effort between divinity and humanity and that humanity plays a strong role in the realm of causation and that the realm of causation is also located within you. Jesus Christ declared the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And so we know that since the realm of causation is connected to a co-mingling of divinity and humanity, then humanity must take responsibility for the things that we help to demonstrate in the world. But the fact remains that things can be worked together in our favor to work out for our good. And so I love this understanding that God is not so much this external force acting upon us, making things happen to us, as much as God is this imminent, residing within, and transcendent force, being, spirit, reality, that works with humanity to create the unfolding experiences of life. And so that passage that says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to God's purpose. So then what does it mean then to enter into the realm of the love of God? And what does it mean to walk in divine purpose? So then the love of God and the purpose of God residing in you begins to work together. And when you're in function and flow with that, then you enter the zone of things just working out in your favor. There's a text in Job that declares, you shall decree a thing, you shall decide and decree a thing, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. You shall decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Well, we know from that text that that decreeing, that decreeing is done from a place of being in right standing with God, and right standing with the self that is within you that is connected to God. So your awareness, your understanding and knowing that you are connected to the divine, that you are connected to God, specifically through the realization of the Christ consciousness, when we come to the awareness that Christ has done everything on our behalf to bridge humanity with divinity, and we take on the finished work of that state, we take on the reality that I am now seen in God's image, not through my works alone, but through the finished work of Christ. And anything that I do, any good works that I do in the outside is just to appropriate, is just to be in alignment with the good work already done for me, bridging me with the divine. And so we enter the realm of divine consciousness through the realization that Christ has purchased this spiritual realm for us on our behalf. And we enter it by faith. And so in order to walk in the love and the purpose of God to align with Romans 8, 28, we decree in a way by decreeing love. We decree love. We envision and we imagine good things happening. We, we, we send forth good intentions toward others. We we cause ourselves not to slip even into the guilt and the bitterness and things that can happen when we feel wronged, but we intentionally, somebody say intentionally, we intentionally redirect ourselves into the zone of walking in the love of God. What did Jesus say? Jesus said that this law, this, this, this truth, this commandment rather, sums up all the Old Testament law and the prophets. Meaning that when you walk in the love of God, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of this sums up the law and the prophets. When we are able to function and flow in the love of God, what happens is we open ourselves to a pathway. We open ourselves to a zone where things are able to flow and work out in our favor. Now, this talk about walking in the love of God is not something that's necessarily easy. It's not a natural proclivity for us to 
um, bless those who curse you or pray for those who despitefully use you. That's not something that comes naturally to us. So it's something that we have to engage. In other words, when you feel that, that sense of wanting to form hatred in your heart or bitterness towards someone or you feel guilt for a certain behavior, you've got to find a way to stop yourself halfway through and redirect your energy to forgiving yourself and then to releasing others so that you can allow the pathway of heaven's light and wholeness to flood your space. Because here's the thing, even the bitterness and the anger and the guilt that we hold, it doesn't harm somebody else. It harms us because we are carriers and containers of that energy. And the energy that you carry and that you contain, you grow and you incubate and you cause to increase in your experience. And then it attracts experiences and events that are in line with that energy. So that's why we're called to walk in love and intentionally redirect our intentions, our imaginings toward other people and toward ourselves in ways that are life-giving and loving. Now, when we do that, we are able to move in a dimension of purpose. We have our spiritual eyes opened to what our divine purpose is in being, what, what is set before us to do that is, a, that is an expression of the divine energy that God placed within us. And when we walk in divine purpose by loving and fulfilling the gifts and the passions that God pours in our hearts and doing what is right before us to do, then we open the pathway for things to work out in our favor and for our good. Now, this has everything to do with what's going on in you. Ask yourself what's going on in me and at every moment of time, redirect that energy. This is your power and this is the authority that God has placed within us. Listen, I hope this has been a blessing to you today. We're going to continue talking more about this. If you would like to stay connected with me in this way, I invite you to go to jasonpowell.faith and give me your name and your email. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I would love to be connected with you. Go forward today. Be great because the great spirit of God resides in you. Just awaken that divine reality within you. Say, get up, spirit of God in me, and awaken and arise to the truth of who you are. God bless you. Much love. Bye-bye.